Hey, what's going on, people? My name is Terrell Andretti, and I'm the Narc's Nemesis. For those of y'all watching me on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. That helps YouTube's algorithm pick up this content and push it out to more people that need it. Somebody liked it for you, so make sure you like it for somebody. If you need a one-on-one -on -one phone session, the link is down below in the video description. If you need to talk, if you need to vent, if you need advice custom-made and tailor-fitted to your situation, make sure y'all book a session. I do all city, states, and time zones and countries, so make sure that doesn't deter you from booking a session. Uh, my single, Superstition, is out now on all streaming platforms. It is about my narcissistic experience and how I overcame it. It is also featured in the movie Becky, streaming on Amazon Prime, so y'all make sure y'all check that out. It's also available here on the channel throughout the videos. It also features a voicemail of my ex narc trying to hoover me, and I ain't going for it. Also, I need y'all to call 104 KRBE in Houston and request Superstition by Terrell Andretti. The station number and information is down in the video description, so I need y'all to do that for me. Also, I need y'all to step y'all game up on the likes. Everybody's watching, everybody's tuned in, everybody's uh, digesting the information, but we are lacking on the likes, and I hate to sound like a YouTuber, but y'all liking the video helps it grow and helps it get to people that are looking for this information so if you are watching this video at this moment i need y'all to push pause and push like it takes y'all five seconds if y'all would do that for me i greatly appreciate it let's get the engagement up so we can keep this channel alive there's a lot of people who um i see in the comments and they're like We're, i'm glad to see you back i haven't seen you in months and the thing is i've been consistent throughout the months it's just that for some reason they're not getting the notifications of the videos and it's not getting pushed out and i figure that's because we're not engaging with the algorithm so if y'all can do that favor for me we'll be all good but anyway today i want to talk to y'all about ways narcissists create distance for discards um these individuals are weird and they do weirdo shit um narcissists have to create space this is how you know you're getting ready they're getting ready to discard you of course you've been getting devalued they've been complaining about everything they've been complaining about what you wear how you talk what you listen to who you hang around they've been bitching and complaining all day all night every time you around them they got a negative ass attitude they complaining and they're just making it a miserable time and they're taking jabs at your self-esteem and jabs at your confidence so the interaction with them is almost getting unbearable to where you don't even want to be around them but because your trauma bonded it's hard for you to kick that itch so what starts happening is they start trying to create space and what that means is they start wanting to go uh hang out with their girlfriends more hang out with their homies more whatever the case is and don't get me wrong it's nothing wrong with uh you know hanging out with friends and everything um you know while you're in a relationship or whatever but when they start wanting to hang out with their friends more than you more than their significant other when it seems like their friends are way up here and you're way down here they are trying to create space because they have somebody new in their eyes somebody new that they're talking to somebody new that they've introduced into their life and they need the space and time to love bomb them also they're being rude and distasteful to you because they're feeding off of the negative energy that they get in return by abu uh, from abusing you so they're using that energy to go love bomb the new supply because as you know narcissists are horrible at multitasking and also they do not produce their own energy which is why they need supply so they need to um they feed, they feed more off negative energy. They get more supply off negative energy. So they need to make you doubt yourself, crit uh, critique you, um, 
They need to tear down your self-esteem, tear down your confidence. They need to cheat on you. They need to emotionally cheat on you because a lot of people think cheating is only physical. And a lot of people justify their behavior by putting this theory out into the world. Cheating is when you start hiding shit. Cheating is when you start being sneaky, when you start hiding texts, when you start hiding calls, when you start hiding people, when you start hiding friends on Instagram, friends on Facebook, friends on whatever, uh, co-workers that you done hooked up with, whatever, all that shit is cheating. Because a lot of people think it's only the physical act. No, everything leading up to it is cheating. If it's conversation, if you sneaking in a conversation with this person every now and then, you're cheating. If you sneaking in a text, hey, I was just checking on you. Hey, what's up, stranger? Just making sure you're okay. All of that shit. Um, sneaky ass lunch dinners and all of that shit. And that, that's cheating. And narcissists do all of this shit. This is why they create the space so they can sneak off and go do this shit. Because I tell people, you're never in a relationship with a narcissist by yourself. And a lot of people will come with this. Oh, well, I don't think they're having sex with anybody. I don't think they're doing this. Trust me. If they a narc, they in the dark. They're doing something behind your back. And trust me, a lot of these individuals have to give out sex to keep that, you know, supply. Now, even that, whether it's oral, whether it's with the hand, whether it's with a sock, whether it's with a balloon, whatever the fuck it is, it's inappropriate and they have it going on behind your back because a lot of these supplies, they've been with these supplies before. So the touch barrier is already broken. The emotional barrier is already broken. The sexual barrier is already broken. So it's easy to go slip in and out of sexual relations with these individuals because their line has already been crossed. You just don't know that. So they're creating space. They might say some shit like, and, and man, I, re, I remember this shit like it was yesterday. Um, man, what was it? Okay, she was working on uh, a business. And those of y'all who've been around for a while, y'all know the, the history behind the business and everything like that. Mind you, it's a business that I basically helped give her the business plan, the knowledge, the paperwork, like everything needed to put this shit together and, and not only that but the belief the motivation the drive the hey you can do this hey fuck what they think fuck what the people at your job think fuck what your friends think all that and and don't get me wrong everybody need their long time it's cool i'm not clingy clingy i can't even say it because it ain't me clingy or anything like that but if we rocking and rolling you know, not even every day because I'm not going over there every fucking day. But, you know, the regular, hey, come to the house, have a glass of wine, whatever it is. Um, and then all of a sudden it's, hey, you know, I think we should spend a little time apart because I want to work on my business. And it's always at night, though. I want to work on my business. And it's like crazy because there's been times where, you know, she worked on her business and I'm over here watching TV. I'm over here working on the phone. I'm over here doing my shit. And I'm not bothering her at all. But they will say shit like this to create space. Because now it's, oh, well, I'm going to work on my business or whatever the case is. It ain't no call good night. It ain't no call, hey, you know, I wrapped up everything with my business. You know, I just wanted to check in with you and talk to you before you go to sleep. It's none of that. It's straight disappearance for the rest of the night. Another thing that she used to do, and it, it just baffled me. Um, but like I say, I'm not no insecure dude. You pretty much, you know, you you go and come as you please. Just don't start doing weirdo shit. Uh, she used to always have to spend a night at a friend's house, or her friend used to always come spend a night at her house. At the time, 32-year-old woman, you having these fucking sleepovers all the time. I can see, you know, y'all getting together, homegirls and shit, you know, a couple nights out of the fucking year if you're in a relationship you know what I'm saying but fucking sleepovers all the time oh my friend's coming over tonight I'm going to her house tonight I'm going wherever whatever that shit's weird to me 
as a grown ass woman with a man. And I'm not saying you put your significant other, you know, you put your friends aside. Excuse me for your significant other or however y'all think shit should work, but you know when this the person you sleep next to at night, this the person you say quote unquote you want to provide and protect and all of that shit, they should have a much more um a much more top tier role in your life or a much more uh higher position in your life to where you not spending time with this individual but you spending time with your single ass friends you know what i'm saying so that's just me i'm old school but it, it is what it is but again they'll start creating space so now instead of going over there now she has the time and space because you done made up this fucking excuse and you done got your space another thing uh, they'll start they'll say something about a trip that they want to take without you by the way they'll start saying that they want to take a trip without you and it may not necessarily be no girls trip or no boys trip or no, no, no shit like that and I, I'm not for that shit either but um, it'll just be a trip and it's like again you have the freedom to do what the fuck you want to do but if you in a committed relationship if it's not business wise if it's not work related I would think that you would want to travel with your significant other that's again it's just me being old school I would think so but apparently that, that's not for everybody uh, oh, well, I'm going here. I'm going to my friend's wedding in, uh, what, what was it, Austin. I'm going here to my friend's wedding in Austin. And, you know, no invite. Not saying, again, not saying I just got to be everywhere that, you know, you're going. But that's weird to me. You going to a wedding, you not go invite the person that you're supposed to be in love with or whatever the case is. Because, like I say, Women in the comments know if you into a man, you, if you're going to anything, you want him there. If you're into him, not into his lifestyle, not into his pockets. If you're into him, what's it? They got they uh, got a wedding going on. Okay, cool. Shit, I want to see if my man want to go. Because guess what? If your man don't invite you to show what shit, my uh, homeboy wedding or whatever, whatever, and you don't invite her. That's weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's weird. Oh, I'm going to this, um, whatever it is. Like, the consideration, like I said, like, and it, that might be me, but I'm just saying, like, just the extra mile to want to be by yourself. And understand everybody's an individual as well. But at the same time, if you're in a relationship and you're prioritizing individuality more than you're prioritizing, uh, prioritizing your relationship you don't need to be in a relationship because you're going to come off as selfish and again that's not saying do not prioritize yourself as an individual that is a hundred percent healthy but when you're prioritizing yourself not even close to what you like way over the relationship you don't need to be in no relationship because there's still some shit going on in you to where you feel like you have to hold on to yourself for dear life. Because if you operate in health, healthily, healthily, I can't even talk today. Forget y'all. If you're operating in a healthy manner in a relationship, you don't have this I'm losing myself mentality because you're still out, you're operating healthily. Man, I'm, I'm butchering it today. But whatever. You're operating in a healthy manner. In your relationship, you're, you're going to tend to yourself in a healthy manner as well. But when you feel this over need to, I got to do this for myself. This is me, 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 me. You're going to fuck up your relationship. Narcissists will do this. Because if you're doing that, Subconsciously, you don't trust in your relationship. You don't trust in the other person that you're with. You really don't even trust in yourself. 
That's why you're putting so much into yourself because I got to make sure I don't fuck this up. I got to make sure I don't fuck up my life. I got to make sure this, this, and this. I don't trust them to do this and all that shit. That's when people start fucking up. The narcissist will start doing this. They will create space so that they can discard your ass. Now all of a sudden, oh, I think we need to take some time apart. It's me. I'm torn up. I'm, I'm struggling. I got these issues. And don't get me wrong. Somebody telling you this does not automatically mean they're a narcissist. But if it's just if it just don't add up and all of a sudden they telling you this shit it's bullshit. Especially if everything is going great and then they just pull this shit out of their ass, it's bullshit. Because if they're going to tell you, you'll see the signs of shit kind of, you know, um, it's, it's confusing because they're going to be devaluing you and you'll think those are the signs that, hey, they're really fucked up and whatever, whatever. It's bullshit. They're making room to deal with somebody else because a lot of times... When people know they got issues, of course you can't fix anybody, but they'll much rather ask for understanding so y'all can go through this shit together. You know what I'm saying? Versus I got to create the space to get away from this individual. Because if they really want to rock with you, they're going to, man, look, this is what I got going on and I want to fix it. And of course, you're not going to fix it for them because it's not your fucking job. What's going to happen is you're going to create a safe space for them to work on themselves. I seen um, I seen my guy uh, Trip say this on, um, on on his uh, I think it's a podcast. If it's not, you know, forgive me. But, you know, them doing the work is not you carrying anything. You carrying your own shit, your own tools. What you're doing is you're laying out. Um, a floor you're putting a roof for the rain you, you're laying the tools out for them but they come in with the blueprints they're coming with the plans and they're working the tools you're just providing the space for them to do so so if this is always oh, it's me it's not you all that bullshit is bullshit but I'm gonna continue this in another video because it's running a little long um, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you need a one-on-one -on -one phone session, make sure y'all book. The link is in the video description. Description Can't even talk today. What's going on? Um, Superstition is out now on all streaming platforms. It's also available here on the channel. Features a voicemail of my ex narc trying to hoover me, and I ain't going for it. It is also featured in the movie Becky, streaming on Amazon Prime. Also, Call 104 KRBE in Houston and request Superstition by Terrell Andretti. The phone number is in the video description. Until next time, another day, another way. And you ain't got to listen, but I know you heard me.